This video will cover the higher level content for A1.1 on properties of water. So we know water is super important for life on Earth, but how did it get here? Well, one hypothesis is that water arrived via asteroids, and that's how we get this word extraplanetary. Extra meaning beyond, planetary meaning our planet. So asteroids maybe contained water, and when they crashed into Earth, they delivered water to Earth. But if that's true, then asteroids must have delivered water to lots of different planets. And yet we know that not every planet has liquid water. So what's so special about Earth? Well, we want to look at two major things. First of all, the Earth and the Sun are at just the right distance from each other. The Sun isn't so close that all the water would boil away and leave our atmosphere. The other thing to consider is that Earth has a strong enough gravity to retain that water on Earth, again, preventing it from escaping into space. And thus we say that Earth is in the Goldilocks zone. So Goldilocks and the Three Bears um, is a, a well-known fairy tale in some parts of the world. And it goes something like this. There are three bears and they all make porridge because I guess that's what bears do. And one is too hot, one is too cold, but one is just at the right temperature, and it becomes the favorite of another character called Goldilocks. So what this is really referring to is something that's not too hot, not too cold, at just the right temperature. We know that life is um, dependent on water, and we know that liquid water means that the planet has to be at just the right temperature. So it needs to be in this Goldilocks zone. And this Goldilocks zone is a area or a distance away from the star or sun in the solar system um, where they're at just the right temperature. And so that's going to depend on a couple of things. It will depend on the size and the energy of the star. If your star has less energy, the Goldilocks zone will be closer. If it has more energy, the Goldilocks zone will be further away. And it also depends on the size of the planet, because again, we need that gravitational field to retain any water. So when scientists are looking for signs of extraterrestrial life, they're going to concentrate their efforts in the Goldilocks zones of different uh, solar systems. So how many Goldilocks zones are there? Well, there's one in every solar system. So in every solar system, there will be a distance where you're in just that right spot. Just in our galaxy alone, just in the Milky Way, there are over 40 billion planets that are in the Goldilocks zone of their solar system. And so it poses some interesting questions about the likelihood of extraterrestrial life. Um, and it tells the scientists, yes, we know where we should look for extraterrestrial life, but they do have a big job ahead of them um, because there are so many planets in that Goldilocks zone. 